Hey, this is Rick with Outdoor Emergencies at hikingemergencybeacon.com. And somebody asked me a question a few days ago about the Garmin GPS map 67i and about the altimeter page and barometer. And I had never done a video on it. I believe I have shown some things on it in the past when I was videoing some other things and having other field tests. But I hadn't gone through this specifically, so I'm going to do that right now. But before I do, watch to the end and I'll tell you more about the 67i playlist, field test, other things that I've done to help you to really understand how well the GPS map 67i really does. It is complicated. I did have to break it down into playlists for myself to make sure I wasn't confused and I knew how to handle my 67i. All right, so we're gonna jump into it. I'm gonna have some screenshots of this. So what you wanna do if you wanna change the, say the, the barometer settings and the altimeter settings, you hit the page button until you get to altimeter. Now, once you're an altimeter, now it's going to show you, now it may show you different things. I've changed this and I'm gonna show you how to do it, but there's, on mine it says total ascent, elevation, and barometric pressure. You can see it here, but it's gonna be on the screen. So what you wanna do here, there's a couple things, and I'll just start with the easy one first. If you hit on menu here, you can go down to change data fields. And on change data fields, then if you hit enter, then you can pick on any one of these windows here and change what it shows. But that's not what I really wanted to show you today. When I get back out of that, I'm gonna hit menu and I'm going to altimeter setup. Now, when I go into altimeter setup, you can see everything it shows here. Auto calibration, barometer mode, pressure trending, plot type and calibrate altimeter. I'm gonna have something on the screen right now that goes through each one and it's on the support.garmin site and I'll have a link in the description below. And you can go into each one of these and change it. So right now I have my auto calibration on continuous and there's off and once. And then there's barometer mode and I have it on variable and I believe what you want there is if you're going to stay in fi a fixed position and you're always going to stay in one spot, then you would fit, you pick fixed elevation. But if you're hiking and moving, then you would want the variable mode. I believe that's what the support.garmin page says. Pressure trending. And I don't recall, well, it says, so it says save when power on and save always. I have save always. And then there's plot type and I have barometric pressure, but you can pick elevation time, elevation distance, barometric pressure, ambient pressure. Now, I might actually pick elevation distance, and I wanna say that maybe is a default, but if there's a big storm coming in and or the system's changing, you're going from low to high and vice versa, you may wanna see how more accuracy in the elevation because it's going to adjust it based on the barometric pressure. So that's what you can do here. You can then calibrate the altimeter and there's ways to do that. I, I did not calibrate my altimeter. And there's two ways to do it. And one of them is I think manually, it's like if you know the exact elevation where you're at, then you can do it that way. But you can see right here that again, I have total ascent, elevation and barometric pressure. As you're hiking, you know, this graph is going to move and it's been doing it since I've, I had it on yesterday testing it and it's really helpful. It's, it gives a lot of great information. I'll say that it gives more accurate information than the Garmin Enrich Mini 2. And just like the Garmin Explorer Plus used to do, it has built in the altimeter, the barometric pressure, there's something else. There's several things that are, that are built into the device that so gives you more accurate information. If you're hiking up a 14er here in Colorado, it's going to give you more accurate information as you go, whether it's speed, whether it's the elevation, it's going to be really helpful. So it's an, another good reason why you may want to look at the 67i. Well, hey, please like, subscribe, share, and turn on notifications so you'll be alerted as soon as I put out new videos. And if you'd like to support Hiking Emergency Beacon, there's a link in the description below. Now, I told you at the end I was going to give you some more information. 
And I'm not going to go into all the information right now, but I have a playlist. It's right here and in the description below. And I think I've got 15 or so different videos in that playlist that breaks down this 67i and what it does. This video is going to go in that playlist. But check that out because this is complicated. And for most people, this might seem a bit much. But if you get into it and look item by item as I help break it down the playlist, it'll make it a lot more simple. It's a very powerful device. I used to like the Mini 2 better. But when I got into this and broke it down, it's replaced the Mini 2 as my number one device. There's another thing I want to just point out real fast, and that is my top 11 satellite communicators of 2023. It's right here on the top right and in the description below. I walk through every satellite communicator I have minus the Motorola Defy, which is coming in this week. But all of the other devices I go through and I rank I group, you know, what's the best for hiking? What's the best for communication? What's the best for ATVs? What's the best all-in-one? Or if you're a minimalist and the, you want the lightest one possible, maybe you just want one-way satellite communicator instead of two. So I break it all down and I group them those ways and I give you my advice on what I think are the best satellite communicators on the market today. All of them are great and it's good to have something on your pack but they're not all the same and there are some that are better in ways than others. I'll give you one example. The 67i I think is the number one satellite communicator on the market. However, if all you wanted was communication, I would say the Garmin InReach Messenger or the Zolio would be the top two communicators because they work in Wi-Fi, cell service and satellite service seamlessly it's automatic, you don't have to do anything other than if you are using satellite, you wanna have a clear view of the sky. So I give you my advice and opinions after four years of testing these and, and being out in the field with them. But if you have questions and you're wanting a particular one or something that's maybe you have a different priority or you know something that's important to you, I'm gonna do my best to ask you questions and direct you to the right satellite communicator, not my favorite. But again, I just wanted to go through this today. The barometric pressure, the altimeter settings, there's all kinds of things you can change in here. It's very powerful. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you have any advice, tips, tricks, criticisms, whatever, please leave those comments because it really helps me when I talk with all of you to put better videos out in the future because I understand it more and then I can pass that along to other people. Thanks again for joining me on Hiking Emergency Beacon and I'm glad you stayed to the end. I'll see you back out here in the next video.